Welcome to Professor Burkett's lesson on quotation marks used in relation with other kinds of punctuation. This is a lesson on the conventions and mechanics of writing with sources and part of the art of grammar. Writers use quotation marks mainly to signal direct quotation of another person's words, whether spoken or written, thus separating the writer's words from a source's words in accordance with the ethics of writing, scholarship, and intellectual property. Writers use quotation marks to mark titles of short works, definitions, irony, words used as words, but writers usually prefer italics to indicate words meant as words. Writers always use sets of quotation marks to enclose the quoted material between the quotation marks. When writing American English, as opposed to the different conventions of British English or Canadian English, and American English under the moniker or heading of standard edited American English, one should apply consistent and traditional conventions for punctuating quotations as follows. Commas and periods always go inside closing quotation marks, except when placing a closing comma or terminal period after a parenthetical citation, which happens with classical citation. For example, whether we like it or not, Charles Spurgeon once remarked, Asking is the rule of the kingdom. And I placed my comma and my period inside the closing quotation marks. Colons, semicolons, and footnote numbers go outside closing quotation marks always. For example, in table talk, Martin Luther is recorded as saying, I have so much to do today that I shall spend the first three hours in prayer. Close quotation mark, I put my uh, semicolon on the outside and then add whether he did or not is another question. Now question marks, exclamation points, and dashes go inside if they are part of the quoted material, but outside if they are not part of the quoted material, that is if they're added by you, the writer. For example, did Clint Eastman warn, go ahead, make my day? And the exclamation point belongs to Clint Eastwood, but the question mark is mine as the writer. For incorporating quotations, writers use the terms separated and integrated to describe and categorize how they incorporate or integrate quotations into sentences that is their own sentences with a signal phrase and punctuation. Separated quotation. Writers drop in a quotation either by introducing it with a signal phrase plus a comma or a formal introduction after a main or independent clause plus a colon. Example. In the question, comma, after my uh, infinitive phrase, is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Patrick Henry answered resoundingly, forbid it, almighty God. An integrated quotation. Writers weave in a quotation into the syntax and grammar of a sentence without using punctuation, often introducing the quotation with the word that or how, followed by a words starting with a lowercase letter. Example, in the Continental Congress, Patrick Henry proclaimed that, okay, no comma necessary, I know not what co course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. Direct quotation. Writers use quotation marks to signal direct quotation, enclosing a person's spoken or written words between opening and closing quotation marks. Likewise, writers enclose definitions in quotation marks to signal direct quotations of formal definitions, as the following example shows. Punctuation is the jots and tittles of written language, and then a, a comma to introduce my definitional, a positive phrase, uh, which is from the Oxford English Dictionary. And note that the closing quotation marks precedes the parenthetical citation, and a period goes on the right side of the parenthetical citation. Some punctuations are interesting and some are not, writes Gloria Stein. The manager repeated his dictum, and at the end of this clause, I put a colon uh, to introduce the quotation. You either communicate your ideas in a way that gets them funded, or you spend your life working on the ideas of others. Now, note how the quotation marks uh, come in relationship to the other marks of punctuation. Well, punctuation with quotation within quotation. Use single quotation marks to enclose a quotation within a quotation. Open and close 
the quoted passage with double quotation marks and use single quotation marks to signal quoted discourse within your quotation. Example, an oft-quoted Bible verse comes from John's Gospel. And here's the quotation. In reply, Jesus declared, and here's the quotation within the quotation. I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. Then I close the inside and the outside quotations and put my uh, period on the right side of the parenthetical citation. Again, Megan Marshall notes that what Elizabeth Peabody, quote, hoped to accomplish in her school was not merely, quote, teaching, but, again, inside quotation, educating chil children morally, spiritually, as well as intellectually from the first. And you can see how the different quotation marks um, are lined up at the end of the sentence. Now, however, according to the Chicago Manual style, when the material quoted consists entirely of a quotation within a quotation, only one set of quotation marks need be employed, usually the double quotation marks. And so again, taking our example from the top of the page, Jesus explains, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. So here, even though I'm quoting discourse, I'm only quoting Jesus, so I do not need to include double quotation marks Whereas in the first example, I, need to include, I needed to include double and single quotation marks. Regarding commas with question marks and exclamation points, writers reproduce exactly all special punctuation in sources when quoting sources. So according to all of our handbooks, when a question mark or exclamation point appears at the end of a quotation where a comma would normally appear, the comma is omitted. So here's a correct example. Uh, where are you? Ask God, implying, why are you hiding? So after the quest question at the beginning of my sentence, I omit a comma, although otherwise, if it were not a question, I would normally put that comma there. Now the next uh, line has some incorrect examples, where one is tempted to add a comma because that's our intuition, but uh, you would leave it out. Now there's a qualification here. When, however, the title of a work ends in a question mark or exclamation point, a comma should also appear if the grammar of the sentence would normally call for one. So here's a sentence, an example sentence, where the grammar calls for a comma. What is research is the first section of the craft of research, maybe the most informative. And so since I have an interrupting uh, a positive phrase in the middle of the sentence that I need to set off by commas. I need to put the first comma uh, inside the closing quotation marks even though the uh, the name of the sub or the section of the craft of research is called what is research with a, co with a question. Okay next in Hughes Community which interpretation that's the, the name of a book uh, I have a colon um, which I insert, it's in yellow there, uh, and then the subtitle, Philosophical Hermeneutics for the Church. The author poses questions as chapter and section headings. Hermeneutics 101, no interpretation needed, and then I place a comma there. Interpretation or intuition, I add a comma after the quotation, or uh, after the question mark, and inside the quotation mark. Why seek to avoid interpretation? And can interpretation be avoided in, in introducing the theory of Hans Georg Gadamer? So these are the principles or rules governing commas with question marks, exclamation points, and special punctuation. Chicago style and MLA style apply the same principles for punctuation used in relationship to quotation marks and parenthetical citation. So. When using classical or parenthetical citation, a terminal period always follows the citation in parentheses. According to our handbook, if a period or comma would normally precede the closing quotation mark, place it outside the quotation, following the closing parentheses. Again, when one quotes a sentence that ends with a question mark or an exclamation point, or when one asks a question about a quotation, then one must include two end marks. First, the original sentence's special punctuation inside the closing quotation mark, and second, a parenthetical citation 
followed by a terminal period. And here are some examples. King David asked, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Or I put David's quotation uh, or uh, question mark inside the quotation marks, then my parenthetical citation and my period at the end. Again, why does Solomon advise, let love and faithfulness never leave you? And so I have my question outside the closing quotation marks, plus a period, a terminal period on the right side of the parenthetical citation. So again, these special kinds of punctuation need two end marks. Well, punctuation after block quotations is slightly different than punctuation after run-in quotations. When one quotes five or more lines of prose or two or more lines of poetry, one formats a block quotation. And here are the Chicago style guidelines. Single space a block quotation and leave a blank line before and after it. Do not add quotation marks at the beginning or end. That would be redundant. But preserve any quotation marks in the original. Indent the entire quotation as far as you indent the first line of a paragraph, which is one half space or uh, one tab using the uh, indent tab function of the word processor. Uh, further, for note style citation, one places the note number immediately after the terminal punctuation of the block or long quotation. For classical style citation, one also places the parenthetical citation immediately after the terminal punctuation, but contrary to run-in quotations, one does not add a terminal period following the citation in parentheses. So two examples follow on the next slide. For illustration's sake, let's review two block quotations according to Chicago and Turabian style. The first with classical parenthetical citation after the quotation, and the second with note style citation after the quotation. First, for classical citation, notice how the terminal period precedes the citation in parentheses. This is different from run-in quotations in which the terminal period follows the citation in parentheses. With block quotations, no period follows the parenthetical citation, just as in MLA style. Since I quote at length St. Augustine's Confessions, I use the standard abbreviation for his Confessions, capital C-O-N-F period, italicized because it refers to a title of a major literary work, this one written about the year 400. Immediately after the standard abbreviation, I specify in Arabic numerals the respective book, chapter, and section number from which I quoted, with periods between each number. Then I close the parentheses. Second, for the note style citation, notice how the terminal period precedes the note number, as is usual practice for ordering punctuation and note numbers referring to footnotes. Next, notice how I have integrated the quotations with a four-part frame. I introduce the quotation by naming the author and writing a signal phrase, using the literary present tense, not the past tense, such as St. Augustine establishes high standards, and Merrill Westfall summarizes important principles for interpreting divine discourse. I integrate the block quotation, attaching it, yet setting it off from my own sentence, by placing a colon after my independent clause. This is called a formal introduction and is normal practice for integrating block quotations. I cite the author's words by placing the proper kind of reference at the end of the block quotation, a classical citation for the classical work and a note number for the contemporary work. Finally, I interpret each quotation in a way that explains them and supports my claims about them. That is, I conclude paragraphs not with another's words but with my comments. Lastly, notice how I formatted the block quotations for Chicago style. I indented them one half inch for Chicago style, not one inch as in MLA style. I single spaced them, not double spaced as the rest of my essay's text. I placed a blank line before and after the block quotation to set it off from my text. Well, pause and read the quotations if you wish, or review the punctuation practices in each illustration. In the next slide, we'll review using quotation marks to enclose the titles of shorter literary works. According to our handbook, enclosing quotation marks, but do not italicize the title of a shorter work. 
whether or not it is part of a larger work, according to the uh, Manual for Writers. Italicize the titles of most larger or longer works and do not use italics or place quotation marks around your own essay's title when you're writing an essay. Now, shorter works include chapters of titled parts of books, short stories and poems, essays and articles, reports, presentations, songs, short musical compositions, and episodes of television or radio shows. And you can see below uh, the different types of, of genre um, of short works that are placed inside quotation marks. And also note how they are uh, capitalized using headline style capitalization. Regarding terms defined as terms and words used as words, our handbooks give this advice. Italicized, that's the preferred method, or use quotation marks, which is acceptable, to emphasize words used as words, letters referred to as letters, and defined key terms on their first use. Uh, for example, in philosophy, rhetoric, and composition, stasis, that is the word stasis, and issue, the word issue, are both technical terms referring to, quote, the main issue of any argument, usually styled as a question, where critical thinkers focus on, quote, the heart of the argument, unquote, to evaluate claims, reasons, and evidence, uh, according to Andrea Lunsford in my footnote. Now, according to our handbook, some fields, linguistics, philosophy, and theology, for example, use single quotation marks to set off words and concepts. The closing quotation mark should precede a comma or period in this case. So, for example, the terms hypostasis in Greek and subsistence in Latin and English have caused more heat than light in the history of philosophical theology. And in these examples, you can see how hypostasis and subsistence as key terms in the fields of philosophy and theology are placed in single quotation marks. Indicating irony. Use quotation marks called scare quotes to alert readers that you're using a term in a non-standard or ironic way, including slang, sarcastic, and coined terms. Example for irony, the banquet consisted of dried out biscuit, uh, brisket and oily cornbread, that is the so-called banquet. Or coinage, an essay's introduction is usually written twice because it is a kind of forebirth in drafting and afterbirth in revising. So I've put uh, the words that I have made up in quotation marks. Or slang, and this happens to be Christian slang. Some call it a coincidence, but it seems to be a God thing. But note that the overuse of square, scare quotes becomes less and less effective. Writers generally check for misused quotation marks. For instance, do not use quotation marks for indirect quotations, that is, summaries and paraphrases that do not use someone else's exact words. Example, mother smiled, adding that she would miss her little boy when she grew up. So omit the quotation marks for indirect quotations uh, such as this because it's a summary and it's something that uh, the writer has added and that summarizes the mother. So it's an indirect quotation. Also, do not use quotation marks just to add emphasis for particular words and phrases. Example, he apologized that his views were not politically correct, but added that he was not going to change them. So omit the quotation marks in these two instances. It is important to recognize, to avoid confusion, that the way writers mark quotations in American English, as described in our handbooks, is not the same as in other languages. For instance, in French, quotations are marked with angle marks. In German, quotations take split-level marks. In British English, described in the Oxford Style Manual, quotations take single quotation marks and, when necessary, double quotation marks for quotations within quotations. And this is the exact opposite of traditional conventions for writing American English. For American audiences, then, writers are careful to follow U.S. convention governing quotation marks. Double quotation marks first and, when necessary, single quotation marks for double, uh, within double, <laughs> for quoting uh, discourse. So this is the end of our lesson on uh,
quotation marks in relationship to other punctuation. But I hope to see you around.